Thank you for joining me. Today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Shakespeare. Hamlet popped into my head for some strange reason. Whenever Hamlet pops into my head, uh, just like many of you, I immediately think of the to be or not to be uh, uh, soliloquy. It's probably the most famous one uh, of all of his plays, maybe one of the most famous speeches of all time. Um, and yet a lot of people seem to struggle with it because that language, is, is the, the plays are done in, is very flowery and can be a little confusing at times, I suppose. And I thought it might be fun today to uh, uh, do that soliloquy sort of Ryanized um, in, we'll call it modern English, at least my take on it. Um, I thought that might be kind of interesting, maybe not, but um, one of the things we need to make sure everybody understands is you know, Hamlet, he basically questions death, you know, in the abstract with the infinitive verb forms of to be or, or not to be. Um, it becomes a question of, of um, humanity more than a, a personal choice, it, um, almost a social construct, if you will, a societal value. Um, I think an example of that today is, is uh, you know, assisted suicide. Our current society abhors that concept of ending your own life, um, but but it's it's a it's a moral it's a moral issue more than anything, um, and, and I think that's interesting how Shakespeare sort of framed that. And then two within the play itself, first thing we want to understand is that, that a soliloquy, he's actually this is actually in his head. He's basically talking to his Sancho, um, but because it's a play and the only person that I know that can read minds is Sancho, um, it, it has to be essentially verbalized. So um, we get to hear, you know, Hamlet's thoughts. And, and along those lines, though, there's a, there's a couple of possibilities to consider, and I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole, but as many of you know, uh, Polonius and Claudius, they're, they're basically eavesdropping on Hamlet as, as he's giving this, this speech. And... Um, one of, one of two possibilities on that thing, that, that standpoint we have to think about is one Hamlet knew they were watching or eavesdropping and therefore this was pure performance art for their benefit. Um, or two, he, he, he didn't know and he's really, really struggling with this idea of, of, of living with all, the, with all the crap that life throws at you. Is, is it nobler to, to fight on and, and, and never give up, as opposed to just you know laying down and saying, hey, I gave a good fight, I'm tired, and, and it's over. Um, and I suppose there'll be a ton of people that can argue uh, either way. There's some evidence that points that Hamlet is truly bonkers, and then there's, there's some evidence that uh, a lot of it is pretend and, and, and show. But at any rate, uh, take a look at this. This is sort of my butchering of the soliloquy to be or not to be. I hope you like it. Um, anyway, here we go. <sighs> to live or, or to die? That is the question. Is it braver? Is it braver to suffer through all the crap, all the terrible things that life throws at us, at me, at you, or to fight off all the heffalumps, the woozles, the hoople heads, and in doing so, end them forever, forever. To die or sleep, because that's, that's what dying really is, right? Just to sleep. And by sleep, I mean to end all of that heartache, all of the heartache, and to the countless injuries that we are all vulnerable to, all of us. That is an end to be wished for. Isn't it? Some peace, some quiet. Again, to die, to sleep. Perhaps to dream, to dream, yes. There's always a catch, always a catch. Because the kind of dreams that may exist in that, in that permanent sleep is something we all fear, all of us, believers and non-believers alike, we all fear it. It's that understanding that, that consideration that makes us choose to suffer all that life sends our way. 
all of it, oppression, arrogance, the hubris, unrequited love, good people abused by the bad, the rich taking advantage of the poor, the strong picking on the weak. Why should we bear these burdens if we weren't so frightened about what happens after death? At that great undiscovered country from which no visitor ever returns. It's that unknown that scares us. That unknown. So we prefer to stick with the troubles and tribulations we know rather than take a chance on that unknown. Fear. And by that measure, are we not all cowards? Are we not? And our willingness to, to act is made weak by overthinking. So we do nothing. We do nothing. Great. Here comes Ophelia. Hi, Ophelia. No, 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 no. Everything's great. Just rainbows and Pop-Tarts. Okay, you now know why you've never seen me in a commercial, a movie, or any television series. But uh, I had a lot of fun making that. I hope, um, I hope you had fun watching it and it inspires you to go to any streaming service, Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Google, YouTube, wherever you go, uh, find a Hamlet movie, take a look at it, spend some time. Um, I, I think you'll really, really enjoy it. I highly recommend Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet and even Mel Gibson's Hamlet. They're, they're both wonderful, wonderful pieces of work. And then when the world calms down and you can go see the play Hamlet, run. Go see it. It'll be worth your time. Anyway, um, be sure to check back on the channel. We're working on another adventure of Sancho and the man with the ray gun. And as I mentioned previously, we've got another read through of the Jungle Cruise, which is uh, gonna be awesome. So having said all that, always remember in this world, when you can be anything you want, be kind, be humble, be forgiving, be melting snow. Bye.